Hey morning viewers, I'm thinking I'm getting a little bit more like a star every day. We're supposed to be at the radio station at 9 o'clock for my interview. And I'm looking down at my clock and it's bloody 8.56 and we've got 10 minutes to go. So I reckon you could do the maths that we're in trouble. So hopefully the ABC will be all generous and kind. I'm not sure if they're online, but you could probably check out this interview live streaming somewhere. <laughs> anyway, that's why I got my good shirt on and we're off to have another chat. Look at us go, hell. Won't be long and we'll be on national telly. Here we are at the ABC. Let's see if we can get this done. I think you've got a dot on your lens. <laughs> If you see a couple around the yard, your first reaction is normally to avoid getting stung. But bees have got a big job to do. The bush bee man keeps his own hives, but also has his own YouTube channel as well with a heap of videos there about beekeeping, but also showing you how you can keep and care for bees as well. Mark Deco is the bush bee man and his son in John is the filmmaker and they're both here this morning. Morning, gentlemen. Thanks, Matt, for having us. No morning, dramas thanks, at all. So, Mark, how long have you been playing with bees for? Uh, probably for about five years just as a hobbyist and then in the last couple of years I've got a bit more serious and okay. so then I'm yeah transitioning into I suppose commercial beekeeping I guess as yeah. you would call it which yeah. is another interesting phase. So what, what got you started? Uh, mainly because I'm an almond grower and we get bees to come and pollinate our trees and then some get left behind and then I got interested because it's they're kind of a fascinating little creature and I started putting them in their hives and looking after them and yeah, I just got more and more in love with them. So how many soda. how many hives have you got now? Uh, we're running about eighty. So not we're not real big, but we're big enough. And yeah. So we're just at that point where we're trying to find um, transient places to put them. Yeah, as, sure. as the flowers move around the countryside. Yep, yep. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say you probably got enough for your own property now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're yeah, becoming the next part of excitement. But yeah. Yeah, anyway, we'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you were saying that they're interesting little creatures, and we we hear that they're so important for the environment and keeping things yeah. moving, are they yeah. that vital to the whole Absolutely system? Absolutely right. Especially in horticulture, if you took the bees away, you'd probably lose up to a third of your fruit and vegetables out of the out of your marketplace. All the really cool stuff too, like apples and almonds <laughs> and cherries and raspberries and yep. all the stuff we like. You know, I think the um, less exciting stuff stays around. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, they, if we didn't have bees, we would be in all sorts of strife. Yeah, yeah. It, it's frightening to think that one tiny little animal can have such a big impact on, on how everything works. Absolutely right. Yeah. Of course, there's like 60-odd thousand of them in a hive, so there's quite a lot of, yeah. quite <laughs> in, a lot of little animals in, working in, together. In one insects. small space <laughs> yeah. there. Mark and John Decoe are here this morning. Mark is uh, now called the Bush Bee Man. His son, John, is uh, is with us as well. John, you're the, you're the filmmaker of the outfit, and you're just bossing dad around before there about where to sit and how to look and all that sort of stuff you, you you obviously have that good relationship to be able to do that yeah i guess i've been conning dad into being in movies and short films that we're making since i was probably 11 so he's kind of used to it but yeah um no but we make a really good team it's really good dynamic um yeah dad's a brilliant performer and i pull it all together and it comes out really well so what made you start putting seriously together some short films about dad's work with the bees well just tell <laughs> oh right <laughs> that had nothing to do with you at all Mark did it I would um, looking for a new project I'd finished another web series a sci-fi web series that went really well and I was just and I had a cooking show that was going really well and I just wanted something different and dad came to me I'll give you credit don't worry um, dad said <laughs> I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos about beekeeping and they're all really really boring like they're, not they're inf too the information's yeah. great but it's just not engaging and I feel like we could do something really engaging. I was like, oh, great, okay, maybe. And I had a look at what was on YouTube and it was so much there, but it was just not engaging. Yeah. It was viewing well, it was getting good views, it was good niche, and I thought, well, we'll give it a crack. And we went out and we built a wooden, out of pallets, we built a stand for beehives and we shot that first episode, episode one, and I cut it together and we couldn't stop laughing. Got my mum and my wife in to watch it and then they couldn't stop laughing. We were like, okay, we're onto something. And then, 
Yeah, we went from there. Right. So how many episodes have you got now? So we're about 113 or 14 episodes in. So I'm a losing yeah. track. So we do one every Tuesday or Thursday at 5.30. It comes out on YouTube. So Right, okay. Yeah. Do you ever get stuck for ideas of things to do? or Not yet. <sighs> Not yet. We get Not, asked that, but we haven't I was going to say, well, you've done 100 odd episodes, <laughs> yeah. and that's what, two two and a half years worth? Uh, yeah. Years yeah. work. So we do two episodes a week. Oh, two a so, week. Yeah. Yes, so it's course. just over a year. But yeah. yeah, no, we got a long list of stuff. And it was something we um, started doing. We visited Kerry from Half Barrel Honey. This like, last week, mm. the week before we went up and visited, and last week we ran an episode, and we went we we're exploring going and um, meeting other beekeepers and seeing how they do it and yeah. getting ideas from them. And she had a flow hive, which is something we don't have currently, and yeah, that was interesting to see how that works. So yeah, branching out. That's where like eventually maybe traveling to America or Europe and going to see how they do beekeeping. That's kind of the long term game plan at this point. So. Yeah, right. Mark and John Deco are with us uh, this morning. Mark, yeah. you. Uh, how do you feel about you know the, the fame and notoriety that comes with this? I mean, you know, it, it's got to be a different from an almond grower. It is fairly different. I'll give you that. Yeah, it's. it's uh, I don't know. It's weird because I watch myself. Actually, I was saying to John on the way here, I'm still watching myself after a year of this, and I still feel like it's someone else. So it's kind of weird. I've got this. <laughs> Two different things going on. Dual personality. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's just, he tells me it's the same me, but I, anyway, so I think I'm creating a, is that what famous people do? Create a thing, persona, a yeah. something over there. But yeah. anyway, but it's still me. So I, I got know. that question the other week from somebody I work with in Adelaide um, was like, is that really what your dad's like? And I'm like, yeah, it's what I grew up with. It's who I put up with all the time. And it's just put in an... With, I know you like that. <laughs> in an intensified <laughs> version, though. Um, you know, like a 10 minutes intensified. Because it's like, we film... Like, each episode probably has like two hours of footage. And yeah. it's now down to 10 minutes. So, yeah, all of that's... Intense, intensified by about 10, ten times. So, yeah. yeah. Luckily, he doesn't let me in the editing room because I said, don't take that out. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably want me to cut out more sometimes. Oh, maybe. Yeah, well, sometimes when I watch it, I go, oh, oh, yeah. Left all really that, that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought, though, that bees could be that interesting, that you'd get, you know, a hundred and something episodes out of it? I certainly yeah. thought they weren't. I was a bit concerned about that from the start, but, like, I just continue to learn, and I'm sure Dad does as well, continue to learn how much there is to know about bees and the way they function within the hive and they work as a team and all that. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, we've probably only just scratched the surface of it, actually. As yeah. to what, and, the, and I think the other really cool thing has been that what we're trying to do is actually get the general populace to take attention to bees. We get lots of emails from people saying, now, we never really thought about bees on flowers and we've got you know fans that are watching bees and sending us photos of them around the place and Amazing. all sorts of really cool stuff. That cause, And we've got a lot of audience that have moved from being afraid like you know fear of bees yeah and yeah. being scared because they got stung as a child or whatever sure. it was yeah and now they move through to sort of appreciate them and not wanting you know wanting them to look be looked after yeah so that's been a really something i didn't envisage but it's been yeah, really cool yeah getting that reaction talking to uh, mark and john deco mark is the bush b man the youtube channel you can go and have a look 100 and something episodes up there if you want to yeah. if you want to have a look through and see the sort of work they do so what's the mark what's the ideas process for coming up with what you're going to do in an episode do you come up with that or you pass yeah. that over to, to no John? Well, it's usually it's usually what's kind of going on in the bee yard and what we're trying to achieve for ourselves yeah and then incorporating it into yeah something that's interesting to watch yeah has it had an effect on you know you're an arm you say you're an almond grower has yeah. it had much of an effect on that having to film you know a few episodes it's, it's got a little complicated at times yeah. time wise especially <laughs> i'm not getting any younger so i get a little bit exhausted after we filmed and i used to have a day off sometimes but it's but something interesting you mentioned when we went did the hundredth episode, Dad. You mentioned that as a farmer, you always felt like you had were in touch with nature. But like doing this has given you a whole other understanding and appreciation yeah, for right. how everything is so interconnected. Absolutely right. Yeah, it was because we as as an I guess an individual crop, you're focused on that. But yeah. which bees are sort of such diverse, and you and you start noticing when the trees are flowering and what's and you start thinking about nature on a whole other level. And you, it's really quite weird. I don't know. I'm a bit scared myself that I might become a greenie, so I'm not no. really sure. <laughs> I don't think it's such a bad thing in this day and age, Mark. I really right. don't. I'm at least concerned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just going back to what you were talking about with um, uh, getting the reaction from people who yeah. you know, send you messages and whatever else. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's that like for you to know that the people are, are actually watching mm -hmm. this and are, are engaged enough yeah. to, to come back to you and, and yeah. tell you their own story? Um, it's quite fascinating. The ones that really touch me, are the ones that talk about um, 
their granddads or their fathers that they had time with as children and how they miss their farm or how they reconnect with um, what they had as, as growing up in the in – because the, I think now that everybody's removed from rural society, they've mm. you know, all moved into factories in the cities and everywhere else. And I get quite a lot of emails about people reminiscing about what – you know, we're going to granddad's place and helping him with their couple of bee boxes out the back and, and I don't know, getting, finding, I think I've had a few people write in and talk about they find, found the granddad's smoker at the back of their yeah. little garden yeah. shed and they you know, got it out and sent me a photo and reminisced about it. And that's, that, they're probably the ones that really touch me as well as the yeah. fact that I like people actually getting concerned about bees and nature in general. Yeah, right. And so that's been really cool. John, Mark, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Keep it up and uh, well, let's see where the Bush Bee Man does end Let, up going. Who knows? <laughs> Sounds good. That's uh, Mark and John DeCoe. So if you want to have a look, you can. YouTube is the uh, is where you need to go and look for Bush Bee Man and check out all the episodes. You might be able to binge it this coming weekend or over Christmas as well. We survived another interview. Oh, is it time for a coffee? Golly gosh, nearly worn out with all the fun you get up to here at the Bush Bee Man. Anyway, Matt's a cool bloke, so check him out on the ABC.